Hello and welcome to today's video, where we'll be discussing an essential aspect of building safety, fire alarms. In a fire emergency, every second counts, and it's critical to have a system that can quickly and efficiently notify occupants and first responders of the danger. In this video, we'll be looking at how to interface a fire alarm signal into Honeywell Windpack Access Control software to unlock doors. This integration is crucial because it allows for swift and seamless evacuation of the building without the need for additional devices. We'll guide you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up the fire alarm interface in Honeywell Windpack, from creating a new event category to programming the system to unlock doors when the fire alarm is activated. So, if you're looking to enhance your building's safety capabilities, or simply want to learn more about Honeywell Windpack's fire alarm integration features, you're in the right place. Let's get started. After completing the physical connection, open the Winpack Access Control software and log in with the correct credentials. Then, go to Configuration, Device, Device Map. The Device Map window will appear. Right click on the Intelligent Controller and select Configuration. From there, go to SIO Boards and double click on the SIO board to which you made the physical connection. The SIO board configuration window will appear. Go to Input and configure the input terminal where you connected the fire alarm cable. To do this, select the input and click on Add. The input terminal configuration window will appear. Enter the name of the input, for example Fire Input, and click OK. Then, Change any other required configurations, such as the signal type, NC, or NO. It is recommended to use the NO signal type. Once the configuration is complete, click OK to save the settings. If both the physical connection and configuration are correct, you should see an alarm indicating that the input is normal, as you can see on my screen now. The next step is to configure the command file. To do this, navigate to the main menu. Click on Configuration, and then select Command File. The Command File configuration window will appear. Click on Add, to create a new command file. Enter the command name, for example Fire Input, Door Lock, or Door Unlock. And a description. For example, you can create a command file to unlock doors whenever a fire is activated in the building. Click on Add and select the ADV category as Entrance. Then select ADV as Card Reader, then select Door Mode as the command. Choose Custom Command and select Unlock Unlimited Access, then click OK. Once you click OK, the created command will appear in the list. Repeat these steps for all the doors you have installed in your project. Click OK to close this window. Then, create another command file for the opposite functionality, that is when the fire is deactivated in the building, all the doors should become normal. This time, select custom command as, locked, and repeat the same process for all the installed doors. Once the command file creation is complete, the next step is to assign these commands to the input. To do this, go to the SIO board input terminal configuration. And change the action group name as custom. Then change the action to input active. And select the command file on receive as fire input active command that you just created. Then, change the input action to input normal. And change the command file on receive as fire input deactivated command that you just created. Once the settings are complete, click OK to close this window. The next step is to create the trigger and procedures. To do this, go to the intelligent controller configuration window and select the triggers and procedures tab. To add a new procedure, 
In the Triggers and Procedures dialog box, click on Add at the bottom of the Procedures section. This will open up the Procedure Definition dialog box. Enter a unique and descriptive name for the procedure. For example, Fire Input for Reader 0. To define a new action for the procedure, click on Add at the bottom of the Action List box. This will open up the Action Definition dialog box. Type an action name. For example, Fire input for reader 0. In the action target type list, select the target of the action. If you select do input action, the remaining fields in the dialog box will be activated based on the selected action target type. In the select input, SIO list, select the SIO board on which the input action must occur. In the select input device step, you should select the physical input device where you have made the connection for the fire alarm cable. This will ensure that the trigger is properly linked to the device, and will activate the appropriate actions in response to the event. In the Select Input Action list, select Unshunt. Click OK to return to the Procedure Definition dialog box. Once you have defined the procedures, the actions will be listed in the Procedure Definition dialog box. Click OK to return to the Triggers and Procedures dialog box. The newly defined procedure will be shown in the Procedures list. To view the detailed view of each action defined for this procedure, expand the Procedure Actions tree. After defining a procedure, it must be associated with a trigger for triggering an action. To add a new trigger, click on Add, at the bottom of the Triggers section, of the Triggers and Procedures dialog box. This will open up the Trigger Definition dialog box. Enter a name for the trigger. This name should relate to its corresponding procedure. For example, Fire Input Reader 0. Select a procedure from the list. Only user-defined procedures, as opposed to system procedures, are displayed in this list. If you want to trigger all the connected doors to this intelligent controller, select the All Sources checkbox. However, it is not recommended to do so, because if you have multiple zones in the fire alarm system, and the access control system panels are connected to different zone doors, then if any of the zone fire is activated all the doors will be unlocked irrespective of the zone. So, it is always recommended to use separate triggers and procedures for all the doors connected in the project to make them separately. In the trigger source type list, select the type as output. Select a source SIO board. Only the boards configured for this panel are displayed in the list. Select the SIO board in which you want to select a trigger point. In the trigger source list, select the exact point on the SIO board that you want to use as the trigger point. In the transaction type list, keep the default. In the trigger transactions, keep it as default. Click OK to save the definition, and return to the triggers and procedures dialog box. In the Triggers and Procedures dialog box, you can view the list of triggers and procedures. Select the trigger to see its definition on the right side of the window. Click the plus sign to expand the events view. Once you have completed adding triggers and procedures, click on OK to complete the configuration. Once you have completed the triggers and procedure configuration, you need to define the added input into the control area. Control areas are logical areas containing devices, such as loops. Panels, input points, output points, groups, and readers. To define the control area, follow these steps. Choose configuration, then define, then control areas. The control area window will appear. Right click on the site to which you want to add the branch, and click Add Branch. The Configure Branch dialog box appears. Type the branch name as, Fire Inputs, and then click OK. The branch will be listed under the site or branch in the control area window. Add the device to the branch. To do that, right click on the branch, to which you want to add the device, and click Add Devices. The Add Devices dialog box will appear. Select the device type. The devices belonging to the selected device type are listed. Select the device to be added, and click Add. To select multiple devices, press and hold down Control, and click each device. Click Close, 
to close the Add Devices dialog box. The devices will be displayed in the Control Area window. Now let's find the device in the Control Map. The Control Map enables you to view and control the devices belonging to the Control Area. In addition, you can view the status, acknowledge, and clear alarms, and run various commands for each device. To control devices from a control map, follow these steps. Choose Operations. Then Control Map. The Control Map window will appear. Expand the control area to view the details of its branches and devices. The status of each device is indicated by the color to the left of the device name. As you can see that our fire input is normal state. Now that the configuration is completed for the fire alarm interface. For safety, push the configuration into the controller by initializing it. To do that, follow these steps. Right click on the panel, or the intelligent controller. Select initialization. The panel initialization option window will appear. Select all options, and click on OK. Wait for a few seconds to complete the initialization. Once the initialization is completed, it's time to test the fire alarm interface with the access control system. Before we begin, let's clear all the events for a fresh start. Now, let me bring up my physical setup on the screen for a clearer understanding. As you can see on the board, once I turn on the fire alarm input switch, the relay is activated, and the automatic alarm is generated. The fire input is activated, and the fire input indicator changes from green to red, on the control map. When I turn off the fire alarm input, it returns to a normal state, and the indicator becomes green again. This confirms that our fire alarm system interface is working perfectly fine. That's all for today's video on how to configure and test a fire alarm interface with an access control system. We went through step-by-step -step instructions to configure the input, command file, trigger and procedure, add devices to the control area, and test the interface. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.